In this video, we define NetDevOps, what it can accomplish, and what bold but worth it changes it requires. Then, we demonstrate a simple but effective NetDevOps CI pipeline that utilizes a GitHub repo and webhook, the Jenkins Continuous Integration Tool, the PyTest Testing Framework, and WebEx for Alerting. All of this technology is currently free. DevOps principles are not exclusive to software development. Some of these principles can definitely be applied to infrastructure configuration. NetDevOps brings the culture, technical methods, strategies, and best practices of DevOps to network management. NetDevOps will provide similar benefits to the ones software developers obtain while implementing DevOps practices, and it will require big cultural changes, such as embracing failure and learning from it, understanding that change is good active collaboration between network developers and operations teams, empowering teams to take ownership and responsibility, providing feedback systems that are actually useful, and end-to-end -end automation for the whole life cycle of changes. Sometimes, NetDevOps is referred to by different names like DevNetOps, NetOps, or SuperNetOps, but in general, it is related to the more generic term, network reliability engineering, similar to its DevOps counterpart, site reliability engineering. And reliability is what network engineering is all about. NetDevOps utilizes automation, infrastructure as code, and programmability to make changes to, and the state of, the network consistent by reducing human error through validation and testing, which are also hallmarks of NetDevOps. In our demo, we will build upon the work we did in the previous DevOps shop, Intro to Ansible for Automation, where we used Ansible for automating the creating, updating, and deleting of ACLs on Cisco routers. We already have a GitHub repo from that project, and now we will connect that repo to Jenkins, an open source automation server used for CI. A Jenkins integration with GitHub will improve the efficiency of building, testing, and deploying our code. Let's get started. First, let's make the necessary adjustment to our GitHub repo. You can make a fork of the project here by going to the original repo and clicking on the fork button at the top. From now on, I'll be working in my forked repo. Okay, we have the first piece of our puzzle, the GitHub repo with our code. Now let's configure a webhook that will notify Jenkins when a file has changed in our GitHub repo. We can't just point a webhook from GitHub to our localhost address where Jenkins will be running by default, but we can use a cool tool called ngrok, which creates a secure tunnel to expose our local Jenkins server to the internet. You can download and install ngrok by following the instructions at this URL, then run it to create a public URL that we'll use for our Jenkins server. The ngrok URL can then be used in the GitHub webhook configuration. Once ngrok is installed, we run the command ngrok http 8080 because that is the port our local Jenkins server will be running on, and Grok will tell us the external URL we are tunneling port 8082. Now, we create a GitHub webhook by going to our cloned GitHub repo and clicking Settings, Webhook, and adding the URL just generated by ngrok plus forward slash github dash webhook as the payload URL, setting the content type as application JSON, and selecting Send Me Everything to start. Okay, our webhook is set up and we're done with GitHub for now. Let's move on to Jenkins. If you don't have it already, you can install Jenkins for free by following the instructions at this URL. After starting the Jenkins service, we can browse to the local host and follow the instructions to complete the installation. You'll be prompted to unlock Jenkins using the password stored at the file location presented to you. After that, just go with the suggested plugins for now. That will take a few minutes to install. Once Jenkins is installed, you create your first admin user. All right, we're in. This is the dashboard. We need to install the GitHub plugin to make this project work. To do that, we click on Manage Jenkins. Once there, click on Plugins and search for and install the GitHub plugin. Those were general Jenkins settings. Now let's set up our Jenkins project. From the dashboard, click on new item in the upper left-hand corner. 
Now we name it and select Freestyle Project, clicking OK. In the configuration for our new Freestyle Project, we need to set two things so that Jenkins will receive the webhook from GitHub. The first is the source code management section, where we select Git, paste in our forked GitHub repo, add GitHub credentials, and select the branch we want to build locally. The second thing we need to set for the webhook is the build trigger, where we select GitHub hook trigger and click save. Let's test the integration between GitHub and Jenkins by creating a test file in the GitHub repo. After I committed it to the main branch in GitHub, Jenkins shows that the webhook triggered a build in Jenkins. Jenkins actually makes a copy of the GitHub repo we forked and stores it in the Jenkins home directory in the workspace folder in a directory named after our freestyle project. Everything that is in the main branch of our GitHub repo also exists locally now, including our new test.txt file. There are two directories in there which I have added and which are not in the GitHub repo. The tests directory includes the tests we will run, and the scripts directory contains a script that will send a message to our WebEx space. Now that our webhook and build is succeeding, we can run this simple command as a build step that will run a PyTest script I've placed in the Jenkins home slash scripts directory. This script will create a virtual environment and install dependencies and run PyTest tests against the repo to make sure the Ansible playbooks and inventory host files are syntactically and logically sound. For each test, I've created a file with test in the name in the test folder of our project workspace. When our script runs PyTest in our virtual environment, it will look for and run all those test files. If the tests pass, the Jenkins build will pass. So far, we have our webhook working, our Jenkins build running, and two PyTests for our Ansible playbooks and inventory host files. If a PyTest fails, the build fails. Finally, we have a Python script that will post to a WebEx space only if the build fails because of a failed PyTest, and the message will include details on which build it is and why the test failed. We can see that testing our build prevents us from building code that is not sound, and the alerting will keep everyone in the loop. We could also include email notification as part of our post build steps in Jenkins to let us know whenever a build succeeds or fails for any reason. Building that CI pipeline was fun. We used GitHub for source code management, Jenkins for continuous integration, PyTest for testing, and WebEx for alerting and collaboration. There's so much more we could do here, and it didn't cost us a dollar. This is the type of CI pipeline anyone can run. NetDevOps requires a leap of faith, faith in your knowledge, in the technology, and in your ability to adapt, overcome, and flow with the changes which automation brings. Cisco is dedicated to the people, the future, and the technologies that tie it all together. Thank you for exploring this simple NetDevOps CI pipeline with us. We hope you've enjoyed the experience. To learn more about all things DevOps, visit us in the DevOps Group Hub. We're all here in the Cisco community, in the Developer Hub.